Hey boys and girls, uh, we're back here with Brian again talking about Winnebago's and um, on my right we have the uh, the Winnebago that has a diesel engine in it and on my left we've got the electric. So um, we're going to take a quick look and the first thing I guess we want to have a look at is the frunk and uh, so ugh, holy moly this thing I can see a, a significant weight reduction uh, kind of thing happening here. So, okay, so we're we're looking at the uh, we're looking at the engine bay here, and um, um, this is I think you said a six a V six. This is a V six configuration. This is a hundred and eighty eight uh, horsepower uh, diesel powertrain yeah. uh, with three hundred twenty five foot pounds of torque. This is a dual rear wheel configuration yeah. uh, with 11,000 pound GVW. Cool, and it's turbocharged. Yes. Is which turbocharged. is uh, kind of handy. Okay, so um, uh, this is a Mercedes engine. So we, we've kind of seen these before. This hood is incredibly heavy. I, I don't understand why it's so heavy, but um, hopefully this, in, this is uh, lighter, but let's, let's try it out. Nope. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, okay. So, uh, uh, okay. So we were talking before about, uh, added space, uh, for a frunk and, um, gee, I see, uh, about a zillion different ways I could make this a lot, uh, a lot more effective or efficient or, Actually, a lot less costly. I could take that pipe and put it right to there. I don't really... Uh, so, do you have any control over this area of the car? So, this is all supplied from Ford Motor Company with their uh, traditional e-transit that's uh, engineered for last mile delivery market. Obviously, we take that as a donor chassis to be able to develop our electric RV uh, off of it. Hmm. Okay, well... Um, um, hmm. So anyway, this uh, this looks like it could have uh, a fairly big frunk. Um, I could see maneuvering a couple of these bottles around a little bit, and um, and you said that before. You said that you could really use as much space as possible. Yeah, our Maybe. customers, uh, as we collect data from our customers, obviously space is very uh, important to them. So yeah. having multiple locations to be able to store equipment and you know camping equipment and whatnot is uh, yeah. is a benefit. Well, I think uh, if uh, Ford went with an octo bottle here, or sorry, not an octo, uh, a super bottle here, or an octo valve system similar to what Tesla's got, uh, you can make this a lot more effective and efficient, and certainly, um, I can see I could see a plastic box going in here about that size, uh, and you could use it for keeping keeping your beer cold or uh, or what have you. So this would be an ideal application for making something like that happen. So we've talked a lot about the inside of this vehicle. Um, why don't we step in here and you can tell me a little bit about what's going on Absolutely. with the diesel. So these are obviously okay. similar uh, in the industry. We call them B vans, so class B yeah. uh, camper vans. And this one obviously off a, a different platform, so it's slightly mm -hmm. larger. Uh, so this particular unit, uh, as you indicated, is a diesel powertrain. Um, this gets about 300, 350 miles of range uh, and uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 miles per gallon. Uh, so it, it kind of hits the sweet spot of what the customer wants to be able to drive three hours, stop and recharge, refuel uh, as they're going to their destinations. The living situation in this one is uh, built for entertainment. So you've got two bench systems. You've got a refrigerator, you've got a microwave, you've got a sink, and obviously your countertop with your cooktop in it. Um, this one, obviously its carbon footprint is quite a bit different. Uh, this actually has a fuel fire heater. Oh, really? Um, so okay. it, no, it pulls uh, diesel fuel from the tank, oh. the diesel tank, oh, wow. to be able to heat the unit. It's a Truma <clears throat> system. Oh, wow. So I, it, when you think carbon footprint, and obviously what we were trying to achieve with full non-carbon uh, 
uh, execution in our electric RV, uh, you, you, night and day difference. Wow, it certainly is. Uh, this is the only thing that I was kind of hoping to see in the electric uh, vehicle is a microwave. <clears throat> Chef Mike is uh, my best friend <clears throat> when I'm uh, yeah, we had to I'm make a, at home. a trade off decision. Uh, we went with the uh, inductive cooktop yeah, uh, in yeah. the ERV uh, in lieu of a microwave. Frankly, they both pull about the same power. Yeah. Uh, so we thought that a cooktop, uh, based on our customer data, was more useful as opposed to the microwave. So let me pop in here and uh, just have a quick look. By all means. <clears throat> So maybe uh, maybe we can start right here in the um, uh, shower area. This is radically different than um, this is radically different than the other one. Uh, let me just step inside and ugh. <clears throat> yeah. So um, here we've got uh, the the toilet is glued to the floor basically, or part of the floor, and. Um, and your shower is still here, but then you got to wipe everything off and whatnot. I'm sure that it's a good idea to have that lid over the top of the toilet paper too. Very good idea. <clears throat> yeah. So this is kind of what I've seen in the past, a little medicine chest here. Um, similar to what I've seen in the past for these types of vehicles. <clears throat> um, again, you've got good utilization of the... Of the uh, the little hatches here for uh, overhead compartments and whatnot. And uh, it looks like uh, this is Partyville, right? This yeah, is a... this is uh, what we call our stylish entertainer uh, category. And uh, obviously you can get that feel of where you've got opposing benches that people can sit and socialize yeah. and uh, um, party. <laughs> yeah. So. At the end of the day, um, does this have the same conductivity that you were talking about it, before? It does not. And as you look to your right there, you can see there's two panels there. Yeah. Uh, one is for capacity of the fluids uh, and your water pump functionality uh, on the outboard side. And then in the center there is the Trumer heater control. Mm -hmm. um, then obviously over your head, you've got the AC unit, which is independent controls yeah on the unit and then up here up front you've got the lithium um, control units so in a sense in this unit you've got five controllers whereas wow. in the erv you only have one a single yeah. controller wow so in this case one is better than five you do have uh you do have more power outlets here i'm not sure how convenient that would be to to hook up. And then this is an aerial, I assume, um, or for cable. I'm not sure which. <coughs> yeah, that's for uh, uh, cable for TV. Hmm. So it's, I don't want to be rude, but it's obvious that this uh, wasn't styled by the same guy as it did the, the E version. Um, everything here is exposed rivets or whatever these buttons are. And um, I noticed there's a lot of screws uh, holding in the uh, um, schluters. And, um, and then, I don't know, somehow this looks very, uh, I don't know what the polite word would be. This one looks a little more primitive than, yeah, than the, your new the one. The refinement on the new one, we've tried to get the craftsmanship up. Yeah. Uh, and our... our president has uh, challenged the engineering team and the styling team to be able to get to the point where it's very comfortable. Yeah. Uh, the atmosphere is very appealing. Uh, get out of the utilitarian, you know, more primitive uh, appearance, as, as you called it. So, yeah. I, I, I mean, this is a very nice interior, well, although it is. there are steps yeah. that you can do to be able to get it well, it's just uh, to the be comparison. to the next level. I yeah. mean, it's like, you know, Oh, okay, good. That looks like a lot of extra effort. Yeah, so... <clears throat> see if they feel the same. Yeah, they do. Both of them are very comfortable. I, uh, I think uh, this would be fabulous for a long trip. Definitely, uh, definitely, uh, um, definitely like the seats. 
So does this have electrification at all then, or I mean? So this does have or... lithium, a lithium battery system. It's got 12 kilowatts. This is kilowatts. before we engineered the ERV2 at yeah. 15 kilowatts. This was our highest capacity uh, in the market. I see, I see. And how long would that, like if you were out in the uh, wilderness or whatever, would you have to turn on the, the diesel to uh, to get to, to charge the battery? It, it does charge from a, a diesel, or excuse me, the uh, engine alternator. Uh, it will charge the battery system as you drive. Uh -huh. um, we do not have solar capability on this particular unit, uh, but you can plug in and charge it uh, uh -huh. also at a campground. Right. So the range on this, so we, we talked about the existing range on the... Uh, Transit van is about 100 miles. This one here, how far does this go? Uh, between 300 and 350 miles, depending on how you drive. Yeah. Um, but as I drove it from Iowa to Michigan, uh, I, I, we got about three hours of drive time. Yeah. Um, so which is about what you want. Right. Okay. So three hours of drive time is more than enough to say it's time for a break. Yeah. yeah. So So what... what uh, what sort of weight does uh, does the uh, the diesel have here? So we manage typically in GVW terms. So the GVW on this vehicle is eleven thousand pounds. Okay. And the GVW on this vehicle is ninety five hundred pounds. So it's actually so it's, less. Yeah, it's and if you look at the units, it's uh, a, a smaller unit. The e transit well, is. Yeah, yeah, we can see that a little bit. It seems to be a little bit shorter and a little bit uh, uh, not quite as tall. So. Um, if we looked at, uh, we talked about the horsepower here. What uh, what have we got here for? Um, so this is 188 horse. Uh, this is 266 horse. 266. So you, you get better performance yeah. out of the electric powertrain. Yeah. yeah. And they're both about a little over 300 uh, foot pounds of torque. Mm. So torque is pretty similar. So if we just had a little more range, um, it would be ridiculous to buy the. Well, I don't want to say that, but. Yeah, as uh, we discussed earlier, our customer data would indicate that customers love to drive three hours, uh, and that's their sweet spot uh, to be able to mm -hmm. stop, recharge, refresh themselves, but also recharge their unit. Yeah. So uh, if you translated that to miles, you would want to be about the 200 miles of right. range. Yeah. That would give you about three hours of drive time uh, and satisfy the customers as they... Yeah. Uh, have indicated that that's their typical drive duration. Well, it's supposed to be a vacation, usually not a marathon. So, uh, that's right. so uh, when uh, when when Corey and I drove across the country a couple of times, um, we were definitely on a marathon, and we couldn't take much more than three hours, so, yeah. uh, three four hours of uh, sitting there next to somebody else. Uh, it's time to time to take a break or <laughs> make a pit stop or what have you. So. Um, is there anything else that we should talk about that, that we may have missed? Is there another item or whatever? Well, that the only other that... thing that we didn't show you was uh, the E-Transit does have uh, uh, portable uh, solar blankets. Oh, yeah. We that were can be talk. hooked up yeah. uh, to collect another 400 watts of solar collection capability. So I can show you how to hook those up if you're interested. Yeah, I think so. Let's try that out. Let, okay. Let's uh, put the hoods down here. So in the back of the units, I'm just going to hook up one if that's okay. Sure, that's um, fine. But they do hook up in Here, why series. Don't we, why don't we do this? Yep. Yeah, I'll do that. So we want to position it to the sun. Got little triangles here. And then we've so, got yep, uh, the, connections the connections here are made. So, Sandy, if you uh, take that side down. This? No, this, uh, this side here. Oh, I see. There, oh, and I then see. It plugs right into here. Hmm. And that's all you have to do. 
cool and I actually got I actually saw a little teeny spark so uh, we know something's happening already is there any kind of little gauge or anything that you can tell I... so you'd have to go into the wind connect panel yeah uh, and then it would it would show you the solar collection mm. capability um, what are these panels worth like how much do they um, how much do they pull in um, so this uh, each is panel. Uh, each panel is worth 200 watts so there's a second watts. panel that would be standard equipment that we yeah. would sell with the unit. Uh, so combined, you would get 400 watts of capability yeah. uh, in addition to the 500 watts that's on the front yeah. of the unit and on the top of the unit. So total capability would be 900 watts of solar yeah. collection. So within spinning distance of a kilowatt. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's that's... One of the other things that we've learned from our customers is they... Uh, in instances where you go to a national park, they like to go into the park and disappear. They call it boondocking, yeah. where they basically go off grid and trying to engineer the system so that they could go off grid or boondock for a seven day uh, period was the engineering goal. Now you can do that with a mixture of using your AC uh, for short periods of time. That's obviously one of the biggest draws along with the heater system. Uh, and the inductive cooktop, but if you use it uh, in a, a, a sporadic type of pattern uh, to where it's not a very long pattern, you can extend your off-grid capability to seven days. Hmm. Well, for the most part, um, I can see me using the, uh, the induction heater if it's raining outside, but if, um, <laughs> but if it was up to me, I'd probably be cooking over an open flame. Yeah. So, uh, so, and that's I'm thinking that's what most people would want to do. So that would easily stretch, you know, uh, that could easily stretch you out to seven days without a, without an issue at all. Yeah, that's the goal. Cool. Well, I think we've pretty much touched on everything. Um, again, I'd like to thank you a lot, Brian. Thank you so much for uh, for bringing your Very much your vehicles pleasure. down. And I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think I'm going to be doing a comparison drive here. Yes. with you yes yes and about <laughs> as soon as we can pack all this stuff up yeah <clears throat> okay again thanks so much and um we'll be right back with a ride and drive <music> This is really a rock and rolling kind of thing. I haven't driven one of these in a long time. I forgot how much. You're going to get a lot of roll, obviously. The center is. gravity yeah. is higher yeah. in these particular units. Um, so with the batteries on the electric RV, you'll you'll notice that the center yeah. gravity gravity is a little lower. So right. done. <laughs> Okay, I got to get back to uh, more than one pedal driving. It's one of the things that I um, well, takeoff is kind of dieselish. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time since I. I mean, with the lightning, when I drive the lightning, it's really quick and um, really responsive. This one here is, you know, ordinary. It's. Uh, Oh yeah. What's that? All so about? the Mercedes have a lane keep assist system that's pretty oh, sensitive. Really? So that's the beeping that you heard. Hmm. I didn't know I went off course. So that's there's no little uh, sign or anything. I keep looking over here to find uh, find out what's going on, but it's supposed to, it's right in front of me. So it's amazing how quickly you get into something else uh, you, you you get used to something and when it changes it changes your your perception so you can almost listen to obviously you've got the white noise from the diesel yeah. engine and then all that back noise is yeah what the I'm back hearing. noise something and out of this ear yeah the, the difference uh, when you go to the ERV is you won't have that engine presence uh, NVH noise yeah. So it's more exacerbated. 
What exactly is the rattling back there? It's just all the cabinets and uh, huh. the shades. It, it feels very truckish. That's that's it for sure. <clears throat> All right, so I just pulled into this. I just got in. Um, first off, I got to tell you is that... <laughs> Um, getting into this vehicle is a lot simpler than the other one. Um, the grip is in the right place. It just, you know, entered it like, oh, it rolls. Excellent. I love that. If you've got an electric vehicle and it, it starts rolling, it, it makes things go a whole lot better. Um, uh, it's a lot easier for people to transition. Well, I can hear the electric motor, which is unusual um but it's not it's not overwhelming all right i'm going to tell you right off the bat this thing steers like a car this is uh this feels that other thing is really busy um the uh the drive on this i mean it it feels tighter i don't know what i don't know what kind of uh steering system this is but I like it better already than that one. That thing's really busy. And now we're going into the first curve. I want to see what kind of roll I've got. Basically none. So um, we're still at 40, we're both, both those curves were at 40 miles an hour. And then the next one up, I took it around 50. Um, when we get to, when we get to the next long curve. You can hear the road noise more here. Yeah. I'm going over these uh, strips. Yeah, that's what I was referring to in the last model with the diesel yeah. engine. You have that en engine presence. Okay, so, so we're, we're doing exactly the same thing as last time, 50 miles an hour. And I thought I was going to flip the other one. This is really a, a holy... Oh, it's 35 here. Uh, we don't want to <laughs> do too much to irritate the yeah, folks. We'll we will get a ticket, and I don't really need a ticket. Like you're saying, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. And there was no roll whatsoever. So here's the other thing. I can actually hear what you're saying back there. I couldn't do that in any other vehicle. And I do not hear, well, I hear rattling right now. But uh, but it's nothing compared to uh, compared to what we had last time. So. You get a customer. Yeah, look at this thing. I mean. This is a one-hand steer. Uh, it isn't yelling at me for going over the lines yet, uh, mainly because it steers like a car. So it, it's basically saying it's three quarters of a battery charge full, and it's computing that there's 58 miles of range capability with that battery charge. So, and again, the EPA way of calibrating it uh, is a bit stringent. Um, so as, as we've driven these uh, quite a far, I think we put over 10,000 miles on uh, various e-transit units that have been converted into RVs, and we pretty consistently get between 100 and, and 120, 130 miles of range. Okay, so uh, we just had a, a quick ride around the park. Um, and uh, I'll just give you what I, what I think I, I felt. Uh, number one, that's noisy. And there's a lot of rattling going on, a lot of engine noise. I don't really like the tick, tick, tick of diesel. And I really, I mean, I can take all of that. I really didn't like the steering at all. Um, it's, it feels very old fashioned very busy you're gonna have to keep your you're gonna have to keep your hand on the wheel all the time i just didn't care for it this one um this drives like a car um the steering system is far superior 
Um, it's much, much more quiet. Over here, I had no idea what people were talking about in the back seat. I couldn't distinguish anything. Here, everything was clear as a bell. Um, it's very quiet. I, okay, so I, I am kind of on the uh, EV roll, I guess. Um, I can see uh, that, uh, that this is a better, a better vehicle, period, for a lot of different reasons. But as far as just the ride and drive, there is no comparison between these two vehicles, none. You can't compare them because they're not even, they're not even close to being in the same class. This has more of a semi, semi drive. You, you, if you drive a semi, you're working a wheel a lot. Um, it, uh, it rolls, this thing rolls like incredible. This one doesn't roll hardly at all. We did side by side, uh, taking uh, the corners at about 50 miles an hour. And um, that one, I felt I was, I didn't feel comfortable. This one, easy peasy, no problem. This is a far superior vehicle. Uh, my only, uh, the only thing I can say that I, I'm not really happy about is range, but I, I don't see, I don't see where the big problem is with you guys marketing this and, uh, and just selling a ton of them. I, I really like, the only thing, the other thing is that one's got a microwave and me and Chef Mike, <laughs> we're together. So <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, take that feedback and yeah, uh, work with our that team. That would be, that would be the only thing yeah. I would add is a, is a, is a microwave out of, that one's kind of big. Uh, may not need as much as that, but uh, but a microwave would be handy. And actually, I started thinking about it, and um, you know, uh, we put a heating and cooling system into the uh, into the Mini, the Mini Cooper, mm -hmm. um, and that uh, that turned out to be a really good uh, good feature function. Maybe maybe there's something you can do with that. Anyway, um, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks again. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank we you, really Brian. Appreciate your. And I've got one uh, other assessment. person to thank. And that's the guys here at the park. Um, the, uh, the local uh, constabulary came to visit us. We asked them if we could park in certain areas. They were very accommodating. I'd like to thank the park ranger or park police, whatever they are, uh, for, uh, for giving, us, uh, giving us a good time. Thank you so much. Keep watching. And um, if you're going to buy something, maybe you might want to have a, a real close look at this. Um, I might even be able to talk my wife into something like this. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.